Okay, hi. Uh, <coughs> just going to do a... Well, I don't know how long the video will be because I'm going to be winging this, but I'm going to do a video on sort of my recording setup. It was just following some questions a couple of people were asking me about how I get the sounds I get and what sort of gear I use. Um, some of the gear... Get out there. <laughs> that way. Some of the gear you can see behind me. Um, let me get the webcam. This should be a laugh. Uh, right. The, the the guitar on the left there is is my main axe of choice. It's an ESP LTD EC1000. Gorgeous thing. Um, my other guitar, simply because it's it's literally right there, is my Tony Iommi Signature SG. Uh, I use that an awful lot. Uh, today, this little beauty got its first out in recording, which is an another ESP LTD. I'm a fan of their gear. Um, that's the uh, TL6 Slimline Semi-Acoustic. They tend to be the ones I use. Uh, I do have other gear. And my bass is an Ibanez SR300 which I use for everything. As you might have gathered, my so-called recording studio is my bedroom. Um, <coughs> oh, yeah. On the odd occasion, I do need to do keyboards. I've got an M Audio MIDI controller, 49 key jobby. It's just a MIDI controller, it's not an actual keyboard. And I, I know just enough to play basic straight chords, like majors and minors, and that's about your lot. A little bit of twiddly bit, but keyboard player I'm not. Um, so they, oh, forgot the most important bit. <sighs> My Focusrite Scarlet Solo. Um, I've only got the solo, I, I only need the two inputs. One is permanently, well more or less permanently wired in to my little Marshall Code 25, uh, which is does everything I need, and contrary to the bad reviews about how quiet it is, it loud enough to hold its own in a recording studio against a live drummer and uh, quite a loud stack, so I'm impressed, frankly. Um, right, okay. That's the important bit, so you don't need to see my ugly mug. Uh, get that down there. This is the sort of my main software of choice, which is Reaper by Cocos, uh, Cocos, word, however you pronounce it, and I've got a clue. Um, you can trial it for quite a while. Um, it's cheap anyway, uh, dirt cheap, and once you've bought it, you get I think it's two full versions updates for free. So, if, like, if you buy version six, you'll get version seven and version eight as well, um, and all the incre incremental updates that come with it. Um, I, I do have Ableton Live Lite, but I, I always feel that was sort of more aimed at doing loops and samples, whereas this just feels more like a, a proper multi-track to me. Uh, obviously, everyone has their own preference, but Reaper's mine. <coughs> So I do all my donkey work here. Uh, I start off, I, I created a, a template. Uh, this isn't going to be a sort of tutorial about Reaper, but I will cover some stuff on it, because obviously if you're not using Reaper, it's academic. So I have myself a template. Um, my MIDI drums, I have split per channel. So I've got bass drum, snare, hi-hat, side stick, which I very rarely use. I used to use it, but I don't now. Cymbals and toms, and they're just so I can sort of balance the MIDI drums a little bit. Um, to sequence in them, I did not get round to showing that. Um, hold on, let me just bear with me a second. I forgot about this bit. Whoop, here we go. Got a decent size. So, sequencing, that's what I use. My Korg pad control. Just a 
I just treat it like a drum machine basically. Each of the pads is assigned to the relevant things, kick, snare, hi-hats, the bottom row is bass drums, hi-hat, second row, snare, uh, side stick and hi-hat, third row, cymbals, fourth row, toms. Um, and I use that for just hammering in the sounds while I'm playing along, usually to a click track of my making. So let's get my mush out of the way again and go back over to Reaper. So <coughs> this would be how I'd initially set everything up. All the inputs are set up so they match how I've got my focus right set up. So basically all the guitars are on input 2, vocals are on input 1, because that's the mic input on the scope, the solo. And then the drums are just separated. I think we channel one, two, three, four, five, six, basically. So contrary to the typical channel ten for MIDI. <coughs> and obviously the the core control is set up accordingly. And what I'll normally do first, uh, my drums. I use the drum core for VST. I upgraded. Um, I had a free drum core three, free. Uh, which came with one kit, which was great. It's a great little kit, but you just can't find that anymore. They don't, they don't leave it available for download anymore. So, um, what I would recommend, let me just t turn that off for now, and all, is you go and find Stephen Slate Drums. Um, he provides three sort of basic kits. which are more than adequate and again it's samples so you're not getting any naff midi sounds so I'd recommend that if you can't afford drum core but uh, I've got drum core and I've got the various drum kits Though 99% of the time I use that one cause simply because I like it. The other ones I do use depending if I feel the song suits it better. Like for example I've just been doing Everybody Hurts by R.E.M. And I used the Ben Smith kit for that. Um, then the first thing I'll do is I'll just throw in a simple MIDI item so I'll just do that and I'll slap a MIDI item in and this will become my click track basically I'll just stick it on there and then I just manually stick in this is my box standard and that's it nothing fancy um, make sure that the item settings it loops and then basically that's my click track and I'll just drag it out to however, big, however long the, the song is just gives me something to work to and then I'll do a couple of things, one of two things is if I've got a decent MIDI file for it which I've exported from Guitar Pro um, which can be a bit hit and miss to be honest um, some of them are brilliant, some of them are atrocious um, and some of them don't necessarily provide the right sounds even though but I don't tend to bother about that, I tend to just pick out the drums anyway that's all I'm really interested in um, or, or I might put the guitars on as MIDI guitars just as a guide while I lay down the first guitar but normally I just I'll take the drums, import it as a MIDI, drag it up into here, and uh, then again just use that as a base for when I record everything else. Um, the next thing I'll do, where it's possible, is I'll try and drag in the actual file the the of the song, in this case for the the REM one, pulled it in and as luck would have it this one this it strikes me they've definitely worked to a click track because when I set the tempo it was almost spot on if it isn't spot on 
I will do some serious donkey work of just going in having my click track and then isolating I'd say it was almost spot on isolating bits cutting them up and lining them up accordingly um, if I go I'm trying to let me see one did do, do. Uh, let's see, I think, I think this one was, yeah, that one wasn't too bad either. Oh, that's just the vocals. But, yeah, I've got some where they're absolutely appalling, and so it, it I'm literally slicing almost every thing. That's a personal preference, by the way, because I, I, I like things on the beat simply because I have a variation of this song which I'll then use as a backing track when I'm practicing with me mate more of which in a minute I'll show you <coughs> so I'll pull that in line that up and then like on this one the first thing I did I recorded one guitar and so if I isolate that Then I'll lay down a second guitar. And so on and so forth. Um, lay down all the guitars I want. Lay down my bass guitar. And as you might have seen from the, the file title, I call this MIDI. Because um, I've never figured out how to correctly balance all the MIDI sort of instruments so what I tend to do is I freeze them and so like in this one which is one of mine uh, I'll have sequenced all those drums manually because obviously there's no drum track to this because I created the song myself um, then once I've got the layout I'm happy with I freeze them shift and I save a file and I call it the perform and that's got the, au the actual audio in, so it allows me to balance it. And I'm sure someone else knows how to do it properly, You just using the MIDI. But I know just enough to get what I want done. Um, and so I, that way gives me more sort of freedom. Um, and then that's the track I started them building things from. And, and I set my snapshots from. So I have a bass mix which I've obviously deleted a, rec a, f a, fire, a track since I've done those mixes. Um, that is just what, what I'd class as my demo. Um, so that's got everything in, including my poor attempt at vocals. Then I've got no guitar, and that's for me practicing at home by myself. I tend to get rid of any lead channels or secondary guitar channels and just have a a quiet rhythm guitar underneath but the bass and the drums and that are, are active then I create one from a friend called Bass High um, which is similar to the guitar but does have the lead but the bass is prominent in the mix I do a version of the bass mix without the bass with the bass muted so he can play along and not get confused by anything I may have done on the bass then we have a drums high which is what we use when we're practicing together at the local hall and it, it's literally just drums some occasionally a, the odd guitar fill or maybe the odd keyboard here and there um, and they all sort of get output so if we sort of like take this <laughs> my sort of layout of how I do songs. Um, 
I say when I'm sort of lining things up it's just I'll splice it and then I'll use the the time shift to to drag it one way or another to speed it up and slow it down um, that's really it and that, that's sort of the reason I do with it the way I do um, if you're lucky and sometimes you are you can end up with um, the tracks having you'll find an isolated vocals or even an isolated bass and drums on guitar uh, on YouTube, sorry, <laughs> isolated drums and that on YouTube uh, for example uh, No One Knows by Queens of the Stone Age which is a... I'd hate to have to sequence this thing manually luckily I found the isolated drums um, and that's literally Dave Grohl playing the drums on the track. So well, actually that might slide there. So you can get lucky and you'll find a track like that. Um I think with me I think this one has isolated stuff on it as well so as I say you do you can get lucky yeah so you've got isolated vocals and isolated drums so I yeah, just What's beautiful about this is it, it really puts the sort of your stuff to the test. So I've got the isolated vocals and I've got the isolated drums and then the rest I've done the things and And that's so really good fun because it gives you a great idea of what you're up to. I um, think that's it. I don't think there's... Um, I don't do anything special. I know just enough about Reaper to to record stuff. I know just enough music to be able to play these things. Um, and that's it. If you have any questions or you want to, me to cover something very specific in more detail, uh, leave a message in the comments. Uh, otherwise, uh, that's a short and sweet rundown of how I record things. <laughs>